Hello and welcome back. Today Morgana's going to be showing you how she painted these two beautiful red crowned cranes using salt for these fabulous effects. It's a gorgeous painting, I hope you really enjoy it and don't forget to check out Morgana's uh, Patreon page in the link below if you really like this style of painting. She has a lot of exclusive demos over there that I think you'd really enjoy. Hello everybody and welcome to Lois and Morgana Davidson Art. It's Morgana here and today I am painting this lovely landscape scene featuring this pair of spectacular red crowned cranes. I'm beginning with a pencil outline of the birds uh, which I will then protect from the first watercolour wash using a Pebio brand masking fluid. So to prepare for the first wash, I'm going to wet the paper all over with my large two inch wash brush uh, and just some nice clean fresh water. Just get that paper really nice and wet and let that water soak in for just a moment. Um, I'll pop a full list of uh, everything that I'm using today in the video description as per usual. So the first colour I'm going to be using today is some raw sienna and I'm just putting this in really loosely just using the corner of my wash brush just to get some uh, nice bold marks there straight away. And I'm also adding in um, a lot of indigo here using my largest mop brush uh, and this is just such a lovely colour combination and the indigo is such a lovely strong bold colour um, that I'm just moving it all around the paper, just trying to get some interesting marks and shapes going to start with. I'm also adding in a touch of cerulean blue just to lighten up the indigo a little bit because it can be a bit rich all on its own. Now you can of course use whichever large brush you feel comfortable with um, for this wet and wet stage, as long as it's large enough to get good coverage across the paper nice and quickly. The one I'm using here is the Estoda Ultimo Evolution 1933 brush size 20. Um, it's a very lovely brush as you can see, you get good quick coverage, um, it's got good uh, paint and water holding capacity and you can see here I'm just using it to add in some burnt sienna to begin introducing some nice pops of brighter colour. You can see here I'm just adding a little bit more water into the paper and just making sure that colour pours all the way down to the bottom of the paper. Um, as you can see I'm painting flat um, at the moment, I'm going to do a bit of tipping and tilting later on but for now I'm just trying to get um, a nice little bit of colour and movement, some interesting shapes to work with, P placing the colour sort of around the, um, the bird shapes that as you can see are being very nicely protected by the masking fluid. And just adding in some darts now with the point of this, uh, this lovely brush. This is some sepia going in now. It's a lovely sort of warm rich dark colour and I'm using it quite liberally um, because I'm planning to uh, have a little spray with my water spray uh, in a bit just to uh, sort of try and get some of the paint moving and of course when you add more water into a painting you end up diluting the paint and diluting the colour a little bit so I'm not worried about how dark this is looking right now. And just to prove it here is some more indigo lovely and dark going into the foreground there and have time to have a little bit of fun with the water spray. So you can see here I'm spraying along the sort of mid and bottom section. I've uh, pulled my board upwards and I'm allowing the paint to move around uh, and sort of create its own patterns and its own flow. Here you can see quite a lot of water was collecting where the masking fluid was at the top there of those, uh, of those birds. So I'm just taking out a bit of the excess water with some tissue and now turning it all upside down and letting the water run the other way. You can see this is pulling the paint down the page uh, and creating some really interesting soft sort of diffused background shapes that are going to look lovely as a sort of uh, impressionistic loose background 
to the birds that we're going to paint in later. Now at this point you could very easily leave it here and set it aside to dry. I think it looks lovely. Um, but I'm also adding a sprinkle of salt for some extra texture um, across the painting. You don't need anything fancy for this, just regular table salt will do. And you can see it's starting to work its magic in the lower corner while I tidy up some of the excess paint, uh, dab it up from the top of the masking fluid with a bit of clean tissue. So to get some more movement into this painting, I decided to set it upright on its edge to dry vertically. And you can see here I've actually got this shape forming in the lower corner, this very dark edge that I wasn't too keen on. Um, so I decided to give it a quick squirt with my spray bottle um, and just to get rid of that hard edge whilst the paint is still slightly wet. And you can see it's uh, starting to run again uh, and it will end up much paler in that lower corner. Um, my apologies for the wobbly camera work. I was attempting to hold the camera with one hand and um, fix the painting with the other. Um, but you can see here we've got lots of lovely salt effects uh, in the sky and in the area around the birds, which I really, really like. You can see it's dried a lot paler here in this lower left corner because of the extra water that I sprayed on whilst it was drying. Um, but I actually really like how it turned out. It wasn't quite what I had in mind, but uh, we as painters must be adaptable, especially when it comes to watercolour, uh, working in this kind of impressionistic way with the spray bottle. So I've decided to turn this lower area here into a lake. So we've got our lovely bird standing on the lakeside. Uh, and I love how this one here on the, uh, on the right is looking up across this scattering of salt blooms that I've got, perhaps hoping to catch a tasty mayfly or simply watching uh, the little seeds or blossom petals scattering across the sky. So I'm using my sword liner brush to begin basically creating the outline of this lake. Um, at first with some very, very light uh, raw sienna to just mark out the shape along the top here. And now I'm just adding some reeds and details as well. I'm also varying my brush strokes a bit so you can see I'm using the belly of the sword liner to uh, add extra detail into this lower area that's going to become the lake. I'm going to create some uh, small reflections here and just a little bit of detail and I'm moving between um, different colours on my palette as well so I'm using lots of uh, raw sienna, a bit of burnt sienna and some indigo as well. And now to help uh, reinforce that uh, sort of lakeside boundary, I'm using indigo and sepia uh, and my texture brush to begin adding a bit of definition along this line. Um, this is a Matthew Palmer tree and texture brush size large, but of course, um, as always, you don't have to use a texture brush. You can use whichever brush you like, anything old and ratty that will give you a nice sort of interesting, slightly disheveled mark will work really well here to just start creating a little bit of texture uh, and a little bit of definition again in this uh, area that I've marked out as the lakeside. And of course it's all right to go over and around the birds with this very dark paint because I haven't removed the masking fluid yet, so they're still protected. And you can see I'm just using the brush very lightly. I'm holding it about two thirds of the way up the handle and using it to quite loosely just build up this um, darker texture uh, and just slowly working my way around the lake shore, basically creating it as I go creating a little bit of extra sort of um, dark texture down in this bottom right corner. And this is one of the things that's really great about doing these kind of backgrounds for paintings that have a lot of movement and a lot of spontaneity in them from doing that first wash where you move the board around and get uh, some interesting effects is that you never quite know what you're going to get. Uh, and I find that exciting. 
Um, for instance, I hadn't planned a lake in the lower corner of this painting. I had planned perhaps um, some foliage and perhaps a tree uh, with lovely sort of delicate overhanging branches, but that very quickly went by the wayside once I'd seen what my first wash uh, actually dried like. So as I said before, I think it certainly pays to be uh, flexible when you're doing these kinds of paintings and just sort of follow where the paint and water takes you, so to speak. As you can see now, I'm happy with the uh, border of my lake and sort of foliage all around it. I begin to add in some taller um, grasses, some taller reeds and rushes around the birds just to sort of complement their shape, their sort of very tall, uh, majestic uh, stature. I decided to start adding in some taller reeds and rushes uh, all around them. The brush I'm using for this is the Pro Art Sword Liner in size small. Uh, really handy little brushes for these very long thin lines. Honestly cannot recommend these enough. They come in small, medium and large, but I find the small the most versatile. So at this point I'm just going to continue along the lake shore, adding in these lovely tall statuesque reeds and rushes until I'm happy with the overall effect. You can see I'm just adding in the last few here, just with a few very simple strokes of the brush. And I'm even adding in these uh, delicate little sort of seedy tops to this um, these tall reeds and rushes here, which is really simply done just using a bit of sepia mixed with indigo and the tip of the sword liner. So now I'm just going to add a little bit of extra spatter detail uh, along the line of these reeds and rushes using some sepia and some light red. And once that's fully dry, I'm ready to remove the masking fluid, which you can do quite easily just using your fingertip or an eraser like this. And now with the masking fluid fully removed, you can see we're left with these lovely clean outlines ready to paint. You can see that I've added a little bit of pencil detail here and there to just mark out the sections that I want to do in different colours. I'm beginning with lamp black, which is a lovely strong colour as I really want these birds to stand out against the lovely washy background. These are red crowned cranes that I'm painting today. Some of the rarest cranes in the world apparently. Very uh, instantly recognisable I think with this sort of black and white plumage and the, of course the distinctive red crown on top of its head. Uh, in some parts of the world they're also seen as symbols of luck longevity and fidelity, so perhaps painting these lovely birds will bring me some luck in the future, or at least some luck with uh, finishing off this painting. You can see I'm using a little bit of uh, wet and wet painting here on the bird's head to just feather the edge of that uh, black line. I don't want it to be too hard a line, I want to basically have a soft edge just to imply the area where the black feathers are overlapping with the white feathers and creating that sort of soft diffused edge here. It's at this point that it can pay to sort of take your time and go quite slowly and carefully, um, especially as there are so few colours to mess around with um, in this particular part of the painting. A little bit of raw sienna mixed with some more lamp black that gives us a nice sort of off-brown colour for the beak, which should just go in very simply there. I'm using Windsor Red to paint in this bird's characteristic red crown, uh, but of course any decently bright red that you have uh, in your palette will work just as well. So a nice bright cadmium red or a vermilion, something like that would look equally lovely, just as long as it's nice and bright and can stand up to that dark, black plumage in the head and the neck. So you can see for uh, this part I'm putting a uh, little bit of clean water across the body of the bird to help me get those nice blended edges and a bit of diffusion. We've got a little bit of black plumage to cover just down this end, the uh, beginnings of the tail which is covered 
um, by the other bird standing in front of it. Um, so we're taking a nice clean edge down that one side uh, and then the feathered edge on the left side which is going into the white plumage. And now into the uh, water that I put across the crane's body to start with, I'm adding in a little bit of indigo you can see here. Uh, I'm just going to move that around with the brush uh, and diffuse that, blend that up into the bird's body. And this is just going to give us a slightly off-white colour, especially around underneath on the belly of the bird where we would naturally get some shadow falling across those white feathers. So it's not going to be just plain white, this just gives us a little bit of roundness and just a little bit of shading. And that's it, it's as simple as that. I'm going to paint in the legs later, but for now I'm just going to do the other birds quite quickly. I'm going to show you the same basic steps, um, but a slightly shortened version. So again, starting with the lamp black here and just pulling the colour up and across the shapes that have already been uh, marked out using the masking fluid. You can see here I've got the black coming down the bird's elegant neck and now to just pull the colour around this area here, this uh, bit of darker plumage we've got. This bird is uh, facing away from us uh, and looking sort of up and towards those uh, <laughs> lovely little salt blooms that we've got in the sky. So this is the back part of the wing and the tail here. And again in this lower section, uh, this is white plumage uh, in the bird, so I'm just adding in a little bit of blue paint, wet and wet, and just blending that in to create some shadow. And now with my fine detail brush, coming in again with the Windsor Red to add his magnificent red crown. I'm using a similar combination of colours that I used to paint the beak to now paint in some detail down uh, these long legs. That is some more raw sienna with a very small amount of lamp black added to just dull that bright golden colour down a little. If you don't have any uh, black, black paint, or if you find that a little too uh, worrying to work with, then um, a really nice grey like a Payne's grey or a neutral tint would work really well for this painting too. And you can see here I'm using a little more black and again my fine detail brush to add in some very small eyes and some nostrils here, just these tiny details that help just finish these birds off. And now I'm really happy with how these birds look. I just need to uh, sort of root them into the landscape a little bit just by adding some more foliage delicately that covers the, uh, the legs here, adding a bit more um, grass detail. Just because uh, of the way that we painted this using the masking fluid, obviously there's a tendency sometimes for them to look as though they're sort of sitting on top of the landscape rather than standing in it. So I find that to combat that it sometimes helps to add a few extra little foliage details that just go across the leg or body of whatever it is you're painting. So here you can see I'm adding some more reeds going across this bird and that's just going to help them become a part of the landscape rather than looking like they're just sitting on top of it. And now for a finishing touch, I'm using a little bit of white gouache to add some highlights into these areas that have become very dark. And this is literally just following the pattern of reeds that I've already painted with my sword liner brush uh, and just echoing it with the pale paint. And you can see just pulling these little details out. The white gouache is uh, a paint that also dries for me a little bit um, duller than it goes on. So you can see 
these lines are going on very very white but they will fade back a bit as the painting dries but I thought just thought some of these areas looked a little darker down here and so this is a really nice quick simple way to uh, add in some highlights and with that finishing touch done the painting is complete this is how it looks like now it's all finished and dried and I must say I thoroughly enjoyed painting this one today it was a bit of an adventure doing the background wash um, but I'm really pleased with how the salt works um, the little salt details in the sky where they bloomed out into these tiny perfect little shapes um, really made me smile I think they look like lovely little delicate seeds sort of blown on the wind that these trains are looking at or perhaps some mayflies coming up from this pond that perhaps the trains are trying to snack upon um, overall I'm really pleased with the delicacy of this painting and of course with these handsome cranes which I hope will bring us all luck in the future um, pop any comments you have below I'd love to hear what you think of this one um, but that's all from me this week so thank you everybody so much for watching if you'd like to see some more videos like this then please do check out my patreon page uh, by following the link below um, but for now I wish you all a wonderful day and a very happy painting